Right, hi guys. In this video, I'll be talking about the real truth behind investing in China stocks, both the risks as well as the rewards. Now, first, let me just say that I'm not from China. I know some of you racist bastards are looking at my eyes and thinking, he's from China. No, I'm not. Neither am I from the US. I'm from Singapore. And Singapore is kind of like Switzerland. We are completely neutral. So I've got no political biases at all. I have no love for the Chinese government. Neither do I have any love for the US government. I just follow the smell of money. I just go where I can get the greatest investment opportunities and get the greatest bang for my buck. And right now, the smell of money is bringing me to China. All right, pop quiz. Where are the richest people in the world coming from today? Now, it used to be the US for many, many years, but not anymore. In fact, right now, the richest people in the world are coming from, you guessed it, from China, right? Let's look at some interesting statistics. China currently creates two billionaires a week. And we're talking about US dollar billionaires. It's from BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation. And now, new Chinese billionaires outpace US billionaires by three to one. So for every new one US billionaires, you've got three Chinese billionaires. And for the first time in history, they are more wealthy Chinese than Americans for the first time as of October 21st, 2019. It says here, for the first time, they are more rich Chinese than Americans in the top 10% of people in the world. A new report from Credit Suisse shows that wealth in China is ticking up and the country now accounts for 100 million of the richest 10% of people in the world. Comparing that to the US, where there are 99 million Americans in the same category. So why are there so many billionaires from China? How are they creating two billionaires a week? Some people have sex less than twice a week. The reason is because it's really easy to become a billionaire in China. Why? Because of the population. Check this out. In China, there are 1.4 billion people in the population. Now think about it. If you start a business, a Chinese business, and you sell something for a dollar, and everyone buys your one dollar product, you're a billionaire. Now, of course, some of you may be saying, hey, I can't sell my product to everyone. Sure, you don't have to. Just imagine if you can capture 1% market share of the population. Now, what's 1% times 1.4 billion people? Well, that's 14 million people, right? So again, if you sell a product to 1% of the population and your product is $100, now $100 multiplied by one point, uh, multiplied by 14 million is $1.4 billion. See, you're a billionaire. And it's even easier to become a millionaire in China. All you got to do is to sell a $1 product to 1% of the population, you've got $14 million. You are multi-millionaire. Now, the great news is to tap into this incredible source of wealth. You don't have to start a business in China. I don't have a business in China. All we've got to do is to buy Chinese companies through the stock market. Because when you buy shares of a business, you're essentially owning part of the business. So I own lots of China companies through the stock market. Now, currently, 70% of my investments are in US companies, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, Adobe, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, right? And 30% of my investments are in Chinese companies. But you know the interesting thing? My greatest returns recently are from my China companies. Now, some of you would have watched this video I posted on YouTube back uh, in 2019 on the 4th of September. Go check it out, it's still there. And this was a year ago. And at that time I said, hey, I've identified a fantastic business in China called Meituan Tianping that is potentially a 10-bagger. It's a great company selling at a massive discount. And at that time, it was selling for 70 Hong Kong dollars, right? It's a China company listed in Hong Kong. So I bought it for about 70 Hong Kong dollars. And my investment community, as you know, my students, they watch me invest live and many of them were investing together with me. So where's the stock today? Let's take a look. Now today, it's the 12th of June on Friday. Now, those of you following the US market know that yesterday, the US market 
right? The S&P 500, uh, Dow Jones dropped about a thousand points. And that's pretty normal because what goes up has to come down initially to go higher. But even though Wall Street dropped by 5% last night, take a look at the Chinese companies, right? May Tuan Tianping today is up. It's a green candle, okay? So this is the chart. I bought it one year ago here in September 2019. I bought it for 70 Hong Kong dollars. Today, it's up over 120% return in less than a year to 168 Hong Kong dollars. That's 100% growth in my capital in just less than one year. In my investing courses, I've got students from 180 countries, from the US, from Africa, from the Middle East, from Asia, from Europe, and I teach them how to invest in the best stocks in the world, whether the stocks are US stocks, China stocks, or Asian stocks. And they follow me through our private Telegram chat group. And some of them subscribe to the Ultimate Investors Playbook where they watch me invest live every single day. So this is Nita uh, Vendargon, I think she's from India. All right. Uh, thank you, Adam, for alerting us to May Tuan. It was my first purchase after attending Wealth Academy, and I sold half my position today, uh, making 98% profit. This is Patrick, all the way from New Zealand. 104% profit in just two months. Thanks, Adam. Um, Olivia, she's from Singapore. I bought May Tuan as soon as I finished your classes last year. I got the stock at 104 Hong Kong dollars and bought some along the way. And I sold it today, pocketed a profit of 57%, right? 13,000 US dollars. If I place the same money with the local banks, it will take me 50 years to make the same return. All right, this uh, Ming Yao says, thanks Adam, decided to sell in the end, sold at 89% profit. Kia said, thank you Adam for the timely call out as I was thinking about selling. I bought May Tuan at $77 when you first mentioned it a year ago, and I sold it at $162. This is 110% profit of 18,000 US dollars. Thank you for being a great mentor, coach, and master. So Meituan is just one of many, many phenomenal China companies that have huge growth potential that were deeply undervalued. And it's just the beginning. There are so many more stocks that can build your wealth. So in this video, I'll be talking about the most misunderstood, greatest money-making machine in the world today. Now, many Western investors have a misconception about investing in China, and it's because of political propaganda which they read from the mainstream news. You know, they're told that you know, China's communist, they're evil, they're bad, they steal your shit, they can't be trusted, right? And in the meantime, the richest people in the West the richest and smartest investors and business people in the West, they are making their money from China. That's right. The richest and smartest investors in the world are already invested in China, making a fortune. People like Warren Buffett, his partner Charlie Munger, Elon Musk, Ray Dalio, and Jim Rogers, to name a few. In fact, if you look at Buffett, you know, Buffett has made billions by riding secular trends from China. Forbes have said that, you know, why Warren Buffett is right about China. So what did Warren Buffett say about China many, many years ago? Kind of like about more than 10 years ago, he said, what they have done in the last 50 to 60 years is a total economic miracle, added Buffett. I never would have thought this could have happened. But the truth is that they are smart as we are, they work as hard as we are, and they have the growth in the economy from a lower base that will exceed ours percentage-wise for a long time. They are destined for a fine economic future, just like we are. Next is Ray Dalio. For those of you who don't know who he is, he is one of the most successful investors in the world today. He manages $160 billion in the biggest hedge fund in America known as Bridgewater Associates. And Ray Dalio don't, not only believes, and Ray Dalio not only believes that China is rising as a power, but US power is declining as well. The World Bank projects that China is going to overtake the US by 2050 to become the biggest economy in the world. And a comparison between the growth rates of these two nations in the last 
five decades serves as a reminder that like a growth company that has reached market saturation, the US is no longer the high growth machine it used to be. So Ray Dalio is not only very bullish on China in the long run, but he's bearish on the US as well as a world power. Now, I don't completely agree 100%, but it's interesting to look at his perspective. See, Ray Dalio has been studying global powers and empires for several hundred years of history. And what he found is that no empire, no global power has lasted forever, not even the Roman Empire. Now, the Roman Empire lasted for 14 centuries, 1,400 years, but it still came to an end, right? The Roman Empire was from 27 BC to 1450. And every global power will go through a rise, peak, and decline in terms of its um, technology, education, output, trade, military, financial center, and reserve status. So by studying history, what Ray Dalio found is that every empire ended eventually. So uh, more recently, we had the Dutch Empire that lasted from 1600s to 1950. It went up and went down. And then, of course, we have got the Great British Empire. And historically, my country, Singapore, was part of the British Empire. We were colonized by Britain. And that lasted from about 1920 to the end of the Second World War, 1945. And at the end of the Second World War, the United States became a world power, became the empire, right? Uh, so it went all the way up, the US, but it's now kind of like on the way down if things continue. But of course, things can change. If you look at China, China has gone through many ups and downs. China used to be a world power many years ago, centuries ago. It came down, but now it's coming back up again as a resurgence, right? And if you compare uh, these powers, it's pretty interesting. So this was the British Empire, went all the way up and went all the way down, okay? And then we have um, the US that went all the way up and now it's kind of like trending down, right? Kind of coming down. Now, China had a big period of decline, but once it opened up its economy, now China's coming up. So as you can see, as China is coming up, the US is declining in terms of um, the economic power of the world. So of course, when you have got one big global power, which is the US, and a rising power, China challenging it, you're definitely gonna have a lot of conflict. And that's why we are now having this, you know, cold war between the US and China, right? And who's gonna win eventually? You know, no one really knows. And uh, I mean, they could both coexist peacefully in the future, I hope, right? But what I'm doing as an investor is, of course, I'm hedging my bets. I'm investing in both the US as well as China. So whoever becomes the biggest and the strongest, I will win eventually anyway. You know, one of my favorite movies of all time is Back to the Future, and I dream of having a time machine with uh, Doc Brown, and I could go back in time and invest in Apple when it was like a dollar per share, or invest in Amazon when it was like $10 per share. So imagine if you could go back in time and invest in the US stock market just 40 years ago. You know, how wealthy you'd be today. Investing in the Chinese economy today is equivalent to investing in the US economy 40 years ago, back in 1976. Let me explain with this chart. So this chart shows you the GDP per capita of the US versus China. And this is a measure of the average wealth per person in the country. So although there are many rich people in China, again, 2 billion as a week, but a great portion of Chinese people are still not wealthy yet. So there's huge potential for the entire economy to grow. Now, if you look at the US, it's the blue line. Now, currently the US, uh, the GDP per capita is 65,000 US dollars per person. In China, because of the huge population, the average G GDP per capita today is only $10,000 per person. So there's a huge gap, right? Now, the US had a GDP per capita of $10,000 40 years ago, back in 
1975, uh, sorry, 1976 over here. So again, what does this mean? This means that if you look at China today, today it's like the US economy 40 years ago in 1976. So if you project where China will be 40 years from now, based on the same trajectory of the growth of the economy and the population, this is where China could be in 40 years. It is where the US is today, right? Now let's take a look at the stock market. Okay, now I started investing in the US market back in the year 2000 when I was in college. Um, but if you look back 40 years ago, the S&P 500 was at 90 points. Today, despite the ups and downs of the financial crisis, the dot-com crash, the S&P 500 today is at 3,000 points today. So in the last 40 years, American businesses have increased 32-fold. And so if you had been investing in the US markets for the last 40 years, your wealth would have increased by over 3,000%, all right? Now, here's the interesting thing. This is China's stock market right here. And again, if you look at China's stock market, where it is today is equivalent to where the US was in 1976. So the Chinese stock market today is kind of like the S&P 500 at 90 points. So while you can expect lots of volatility along the journey, like what we had in the US market, the dot-com crash, the dot-com uh, financial crisis, European debt crisis, you know, all kinds of crises, but the market always goes higher. The same thing in China, right? So where China is today is gonna follow that same trajectory all the way up to the next 40, 50, 100 years. Now, it is only a matter of time, it's inevitable that China will soon overtake the US and the rest of the world's countries as the largest, biggest economy. As of 2018, the US had total GDP of 20.5 trillion and China's total GDP uh, was 13.4 trillion. Now, the US is growing at about 3% a year on average. It's GDP growth rate and China is growing at about 7%. So based on these growth figures, you can see from the chart that by 2030, which is in 10 years, China would overtake the US in terms of total GDP. So what is driving this growth? Why is China growing at this rate? One simple answer, population. And the second thing is education. Let me explain. The first thing is population. Check out how China is growing in terms of its population, right? So currently, uh, the US has 332 million people. China has 1.4 billion people. And not only that, but it's growing at a faster rate than the US population. Now, it's not just about more people, but it's more people who are more educated. You know, Chinese are no longer the, the pig farmers that you think about centuries ago or those low-wage manufacturing jobs. You know, Chinese people now are pretty educated, right? Now, back to population. In terms of population, like I said, right, the US has 300 million people in its country. China has 1.4 million. So if you think about it, one China is equivalent to 4.5 United States in terms of number of people. So more people means more buyers, more consumers, and more workers who can produce uh, GDP, who can produce goods and services for the country. Here's an interesting fact. Uh, China will pass the US to become the world's largest aviation market by passengers by 2024, in just four years. Chinese air passenger traffic will double to 927 million passengers a year by 2025 compared to the US where there's only 904 million people who are traveling around the world. By 2035, the number of Chinese traveling around the world will hit 1.3 billion people. 
Now I've got so much more I'd like to share with you about investing in China, so I'll see you in part two of this video. But in the meantime, if you want to know what are the best companies to invest in every single month, whether they are US companies or China companies or Asian companies or European companies, you can check out inside.piranaprofits.com and subscribe to the Ultimate Investors Playbook, where every single month I will share with you the best two companies I'm investing in and I do a deep dive research into these companies. And here's a sneak peek into the 10 stocks I presented to my subscribers for 2020. And you can see it's a combination of US companies, China companies, and even Asian like Singapore companies. And out of the 10 uh, stocks I presented to date right now, um, nine out of 10 of them have a positive return. In fact, the total portfolio gain is about 13.6% uh, gain in the last four months. If you compare it to the S&P 500, the S&P is up about 10.8% during that period, while my portfolio is up 13.6% in that same period. So the ultimate investors portfolio, portfolio has outperformed the S&P 500 by 26% within that same period. If you'd like to find out more, do check out our courses or our subscriptions at piranaprofits.com. Be in the markets, be with you, and I'll see you in part two of this video. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.